The actors in your ACA application actually form a hierarchy where you have parents and children. And this is very significant for how you should put together your applications and make the pieces work together. So far, in all of our examples, we have created actors by using the system actor of. But you can also make actors in other ways, and in particular you can make actors off of other actors. And so we want to write a, another example piece of code and we'll call this the hierarchy example. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and copy our bit of code from our simple example and do an import. Okay. I'm going to make two types of actors here. I'm going to make a parent actor, and we're also going to make a child actor. Once again, all of our actors extend actor, and they will all be unhappy until we implement receive inside of them. Okay, and the receive has to have a case for something. Right now I'll just make it so that it catches everything and does nothing. And we'll make one parent actor here. We can call this parent1. Now in a real application, the way in which you would uh, structure things in your hierarchy is you'd kind of break apart the functionality so that um, you know, you have one segment of the work that's done in your application, or or maybe you know, maybe it's not just by work, maybe it's by the structure, and you will create an actor that kind of oversees that. In fact, we will talk in uh, a coming video about the fact that there's more to this hierarchy with parents and children than just the fact that that they have this parent-child relationship, there's actually a supervisory nature and how you deal with bugs. So I want to add a new case class. And actually this one is not going to be a case class, it'll be a case object because I don't really have any arguments for it. And I'm going to make it so this is something that we can tell the parent. We can tell the parent to create a new child. Okay. And what this is going to do is we are going to have the context do an actor of on a props for a child actor. And I want to give it a name. Now we've already seen that if I don't make unique names that we have a bug. So I need to make this, if I give them all the same name child, the second time I call this we're going to run into problems. Uh, but I'm going to make a private var inside of our parent actor called number that will start off at zero. <clears throat> and so every time that we make a new child, we will give the child the name, so the first one will be child zero, child one, child two, because every time we're going to increment this, and so they will all have unique names associated with them. Uh, for the child actor, let's see, how about we, let's make another case object, um, signal children. This is going to be a message that we send to the parent again. And what I want to do here is I want to make it so that when this happens, the parent tells all of its children to, uh, to print some information. So it'll send a message to, to all of them. In fact, we can make a case object 
we'll just oh, we'll call, it, call it print signal. Okay, and so the children receive a print signal, and they're going to print out themselves. We saw self in a previous video. You could also do self.path, which would kind of give us the just the information about it. That was part of the, the self. Uh, so I'm just going to stop there. Now, how are we going to signal all of the children? We can, through uh, Akka, look up the children. Uh, we'll come back and change the code in a future video to do that. For this video, I want to just demonstrate that we can <clears throat> do these things inside of our actor. So I'm going to make a private val for a collection dot, and actually let's do this. Children equals collection dot mutable dot buffer of actor ref. And we're going to add this into that buffer. So every time we create a child, we are create not just creating it, we are also adding it to the buffer. <clears throat> we add one to the number. Actually, there are so many ways in which I'm unhappy with this code, but it's worth discussing them. So we'll, we'll look at that in the next video. And then I can do children dot for each, for each child, we're going to send them the print signal. Okay, so I have this one parent here, and now I can say actor bang create child, and then we'll do actor bang signal children and then we'll create two more children and we'll signal again okay and what do we get from running that and I should actually just put system dot terminate down here so that these don't run forever <clears throat> so Notice that child zero got printed twice, and child, uh, child one and child two got printed once. But the order might confuse you a bit here, because child two wound up being printed first. Remember, you, the only thing that you're guaranteed is that actors will process messages in the order they get them. But between actors, you don't know what's going to happen. If we run this again, we're inevitably going to get a different order, two, zero, zero, one this time. And again, uh, one, zero, two, zero. Okay. We know that the primary actor will get a create child once, followed by a signal, create, create, and a signal. But when it does the signal children, it sends these messages to the, to the children, and those print statements can actually happen you know, in basically any order other than the fact that child zero will do the first signal. So child zero is gonna print itself twice. It's gonna print it once there and once here. This one is gonna be printed first because it will wind up getting this message before it gets the message from down here. Now we have no way to distinguish those two in, in our outputs, but you'll notice here that it's possible that child zero will print after. So the, the print from this message can actually come after some of the prints for this message. It's just, it will come after, but only after the, the other children. Uh, if we added some more information, maybe if I made the signal children and the print signal case classes, we could differentiate that. Perhaps we'll come back uh, in the next video. Like I said, I want to fix this in a number of ways, make it so that it's uh, doing things better. Right now there's too much duplicate information, and we can add that information so that we can tell that the first printing of child zero is from the first signal instead of from the second one.